Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Hemp Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And once again, I'm back with a LoRa APRS product here, or it's basically just a LoRa device from Lilligo. And this is sponsored by AliExpress. And if you don't know what AliExpress is, it's an online marketplace where you can find anything. Anything from the really cheap and bad stuff to the really cheap and good stuff, the really expensive and bad stuff, and all stuff in the middle. I like to use AliExpress for ham radio stuff. And since they sponsor the channel, I like to have them send me stuff that actually I'm interested in and I hope can be of use of for the ham radio community. And this is the Lilligo T-Echo. This is a really small, compact LoRa device, which I'm going to use as a LoRa APRS tracker. I got the firmware from a Delta Lima 5, Tango Kilo Lima, which is the most recent firmware I've been able to find for this tracker or this LoRa device. There is also a French firmware, but that hasn't been updated in quite a while. This was updated about a year ago and is the newest firmware. You cannot use the Ricardo Guzman set of firmware on this device, and that's I'm going to say that's a little bit of a pity because I like that I like the uh, the firmware that he provides. But compared to the T-Beam as I've been using for a tracker, this is a more compact device. It's got a more premium pre-built feel to it. It's actually not a kit. It comes with this case and all you got to do to use it with LoRa APRS is actually to flash the firmware. At the time of recording, this device is uh, almost $56 over on AliExpress. So for LoRa APRS trackers, this is on the expensive side. But what really sets this apart is actually the build quality. It feels like a proper device, even though the plastic here has got a bit of a Fisher Price feel to it. It's, it's kind of the cheap toy plastic on it. But it's got this beautiful e-paper screen here. And let me zoom in on that for you. And the thing with e-paper screens are that they are passive. So they draw the image and then they don't consume any power until they got to redraw the image again. Um, you can see the data here. I am actually not at 26 meters below sea level. But um, I'm in my shack and the GPS coverage here in the middle of the house is actually really bad. So I'm not moving either as it seems here. Um, but let's just walk through the device first then we'll take a look at the firmware and then I'll do some conclusions after that. The device itself is, and I'm going to get a ruler here so you can see, it is 5 by, and I wish I had a less messy workbench, 6 by 2 centimeters. So it's a compact device. As I said, it's got a little bit of that Fisher Price plastic feel to it, but um, it doesn't really matter. There's a couple of design flaws too, or there's one design flaw, and that's this button, which is the reset button. Uh, this is really easy to hit accidentally. But on the back side here are a couple of M3 holes. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to 3D print a belt clip for it. And I found one on Thingiverse that actually has a protector for the reset button here. But let's take a look at the firmware here. You can see that I'm receiving my own Digipeter here. Um, since GPS coverage is um, a bit spotty here in the shack, I'm actually not 81 meters uh, away from it. Uh, I'm about 8 meters away from it. Then you have uh, the data on the last package received with the position and everything for that package. Then you have temperature, humidity, and air pressure here, barometric pressure, time and date. This got a, a temperature and a pressure sensor in it. Then you have the GPS status, and you can say it says no fix here, so it's got the data from the last uh, time I had a fix out in the living room here. Um, then you have the tracker data, I've sent 14 packages, um, no speed, uh, heading info, and then we're back to this. So you saw the tracker info before it reset here and decided that it didn't have coverage. This device also charges via USB-C, so that's a really good thing. Um, let's just turn it off though, um, or actually before we do that, let's go into the settings menu and see what that looks like. 
we got a simple settings menu here. Um, the firmware is relatively easy to add to this device, to flash to this device. It shows up as a mass storage device when you plug it in with the USB-C cable. Uh, then you just have to uh, move one binary file over to that. It resets and the firmware is in there. In order to configure this though, uh, you need to use a little bit of Python script. And I tried this all of yesterday on Windows. It does not work on Windows. It works perfectly on Linux. I managed to get the script up and running on the first try on Linux. So if you get one of these and want to use it for Lora APRS, uh, just be prepared that you need to have a Linux box somewhere. For most of you guys that watch this channel, that shouldn't be a problem. But we got some quick settings here. Um, actually, I need to get back here. Um, and in order to navigate those, I can actually show you a little bit here. There's a touch button here, which you use to get go up and down in the menus. Then on the side here, we have the top one here, which is the reset button, and the bottom one, which is the mode confirm multi-button. Let's call it multi-button. But we can go down here, we can turn the receiver on and off, we can turn the tracker on and off. We get a little bit of a GPS menu here. Here we can turn the GPS um, on and off on it. I'm going to keep it on. And we're going to go to back here, press like here. We get some simple APRS config. Which is just the simplest settings. In order to set your call sign, the frequency and everything you use, to, you need to use the aforementioned Python script here. Uh, but some simple settings here in order to do the APRS settings. Then we have an info menu here. You can see the frequency, the call sign, firmware version, everything. And uh, let's just go back here. And with as all of these Lilligo Lura devices, the buttons aren't necessarily logical. And then we have a shutdown here, but I'm just gonna press exit here and go out of the config menu. So that's it. That's the simplicity of the uh, Lilligo T Echo. And as usual, it's time to conclude a little bit about this little tracker here. The Lilligo T Echo is small. It's got a beautiful e-paper display. It's got a nice case, although with a little bit of a Fisher-Price toy feel to it. This is, however, available in several different colors. You can get it in black and this brownish, olive, greenish, tactical color, and then the white one. My opinion is that it probably would look better in white or black. You wouldn't get that toy feel from the plastic. I don't know yet though. So, um, and I probably won't know because I got one. I have no use for several more of these. But my assumption is that it would look better in the other colors. Furthermore, I'm just gonna 3D print uh, belt clip here so I can use it portable uh, while I'm doing pot and soda just clip it to my backpack here and have it track my position if I'm near a uh, Laura APRS Digipeter or any other little trackers nearby and whether or not Laura APRS is legal where you live might differ though because it's a new technology. It's relatively wide banded. It's 125 kilohertz wide. So not everywhere allows you to use the Allura technology on amateur bands. You can also get this for Meshtastic. For Meshtastic, it's a lot simpler to just flash the firmware on it. And I really wish that Ricardo Guzman's firmware was available on this device. That'd be a clear winner. So Ricardo, if you're watching this, um, and I know you have a lot on your plate with firmware for a lot of different devices, but I'm just gonna say it, I'd love your firmware on this little device. There's an affiliate link down below if you'd like to take a look at this little tracker. Uh, whether you wanna use it for Mishtastic or Laura APRS or something else, Laura, I don't know. Uh, you might have different Laura needs than I have, but it's new technology, it's fun to play with, and it's not about how useful these little devices are, but it's about playing with RF and playing with technology. For me, 
This is a clear winner just because of the form factor and the beautiful e-paper screen. And I guess that's it for now, folks. Leave a thumbs up if you liked this video. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't like this video. And also leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. See you down in bands. See you in my next video. 7-3, my friends.